I think she could have still shown vulnerability with a bra on. So that's really feminist. And especially with the abortion laws um, in America, uh, and then having this film being pro-life, I think it's uh, it's just not well thought out. It's uh, Hello everyone, uh, my name is Ai Jing and today I want to do something a little bit different. I want to do my makeup, uh, Marilyn Marone inspired makeup, whilst talking about the new film Blonde. And warning, I did not like this film. So I will talk you through a little bit about how I'm going to try and recre recreate a Marilyn Marone look on my Chinese eyes and just give you a little bit of commentary about the film yeah if you're interested in my thoughts and if you're interested in uh western classic hollywood look on a chinese person then carry on watching so throughout this uh video i'm gonna talk about kind of the plot fact versus fiction the portrayal of women in the film the portrait of marilyn and the gratuitous nudity in the film that I really really hate and a little bit about the cinematography and give you my thoughts overall. So let's start off with the base. I'm going to use my Shiseido Synchro Skin Self Refreshing Foundation because it's quite full coverage and I feel like her skin always looked really flawless in her films. So let's start with the plot of the film. Basically like my understanding was the film was meant to be a biopic of Marilyn Monroe, but I'm not sure if it was because it was based on a book that was sort of half true, half fiction. And there are plenty of things in the movie that was just completely made up. Uh, so the film opens with... Uh, Norma Jean Baker, Marilyn Monroe's real name, as a child, and it showed her abusive mother. And then it fast forwarded to her being sent to an orphanage. And then suddenly there's a massive time jump where it just showed a collage of pictures of her posing nude for magazines and her getting famous. There was just like no narrative, essentially. And I feel like the plot of the film is essentially her traumatic episode, one after another. So she, like you first seen her get by a film director, and then you see her get sexualized by another director at an audition. Then, uh, you know, then she goes to visit her mother who doesn't recognize her. Uh, and it's and then just like stuff about a relationship with this random threesome, which apparently is not true, uh, with Charlie Cha Chaplin's son, then Jody Maggio, and then the Arthur Miller relationship as well. And then it ends with her overdose. And obviously, there are a lot of scenes with her uh, abortion and miscarriages as well. We'll definitely go on to that. So that was the plot of the film. I'm going to do my brows next. So she has very um, specific looking brows. They've definitely got like a very prominent arch. So um, I usually prefer my brow straight rather than super sharp, but when in Rome. So I'm going to do my brows slightly differently today. And let's go, I'm going to shape it first before I fill it in. So I'm using the Anastasia Beverly Hills Brow Freeze. I'm not trying to make my eyebrows look feathery. I'm just trying to get them in that shape so I can fill it in because obviously the old Hollywood makeup wasn't about feathery brows. It was more like a color block type situation. Okay, so let's talk about the fact and fiction in the film. So this film was definitely blurring the lines a little bit. And I didn't really like that because, I mean, I don't really know that much about Marilyn Monroe, to be honest. And when I watched the film, I was just shocked at some of the scenes that they presented. And I looked it up afterwards and like loads of news articles are saying that none of that was true. And I think that's really misleading to for an audience because it's sort of been portrayed as a biopic, 
but it's put a lot of fiction in there. And at the same time, it had loads of stuff that was recreating real life. Um, like, you know, the gentleman prefers blonde scene and um, recreating actual real photos of Marilyn Monroe. And I feel like if it's all going to be fake, let it all be fake. If it's all going to be real, should it let it all be real because it's really misleading. And I felt like they added those, the, they added the fiction frivolously for dramatic effect. It wasn't really respectful to Marilyn Monroe to have real life. Um, and one other thing like about the fact versus fiction thing was at the beginning where she was being by a producer or director. Apparently this was based on the CEO of the big production company that she first signed on with. And I can't remember his name, but he was famously known for disliking Marilyn and not finding her attractive. So like that's just completely opposite of the truth. It wasn't even playing on the truth. It was just a complete opposite. It wasn't real at all. So her eyebrows are, you know, a lot thinner than mine, but I'm not gonna pluck my eyebrows just on this video. So I'm just gonna do the best I can to make it look more arched. And they do go for a little bit longer than mine. I feel like this is pretty good. So I'm gonna try replicate it on the other side. And this throuple relationship. So she, you know, she was dating apparently Charlie Chaplin's son, according to the stuff that I read. Uh, but the throuple relationship was not true. And the scene with JFK, again, is apparently made up. Uh, apparently the relationship was consensual. Obviously, I'm not Marilyn Monroe and I'm not JFK. So, I mean, no one, no one knows what's real, what's not. Uh, but I feel like the way the, the story was presented, it was just loads of frivolous stuff for dramatic effect, for sensationalism, rather than actually telling the story of Marilyn Monroe. The brows are okay. I feel like they could be a little bit more arched, but um, that's what we've got going on. I'm going to I've put on foundation, but obviously still need to do concealer, bronze and everything, but I'm gonna do the um, eye makeup now. I just used the Shiseido Synchro um, Skin Concealer as well on my eyelid. Just gonna blend that out. So let's just, before you know, we go on to talk about the whole Marilyn situation in the film, I just wanna quickly touch on the other female characters in the film, which were basically zero. Um, obviously we had her mum and she was just portrayed as this um, mentally ill person, which I think is kind of, you know, based on reality. Her mum was, had paranoid schizophrenia, I think, and so did Marilyn later on. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but, but her mum, again, was just, you know, her, the main focus of her mum was that she was mentally ill. That was it. And the other female character that we saw in the beginning of the film, I think was, it was a neighbour. I don't know if they were related, whether, um, oh, my cat just pushed the door open, uh, whether she was like her aunt or something. But then again, she abandoned Marilyn. And then there were some other random women in the film with lines. Like one random woman tells Marilyn at the movie premiere of Gentleman Prefers Blondes to go to a hotel room alone afterwards because there was someone special waiting for her. And Marilyn Monroe thought this was her dad, but it was not. It was Joe DiMaggio asking uh, for her hand in marriage. Um, and all of these women are portrayed as antagonist, I felt like, with her mum, you know, abandoning her, the neighbour slash aunt abandoning her, this random woman telling her to go to a hotel room alone, leading her to the marriage, leading her to an abusive marriage. Basically, the women were portrayed as complicit in Madame Rowan's traumas, and they sh apparently showed no compassion. So it really doesn't paint females in 
a good light overall. <sighs> so um, I've prepped my eyelid. You can see it's a little bit lighter because um, I just want to take the pigment out. And she basically, her makeup is actually quite simple. So kind of above her crease, it's a dark, well, medium toned brown. And then she has a bit of eyeliner. It's not up or like massively winged. It kind of goes straight out. And then eyelashes and a little bit of a lighter shade between the lower lash line and the upper, up, up, um, upper lash line. So I'm just gonna try to do that. So I'm gonna just grab a fluffy brush and I'm going to use a pretty neutral tone. Um, so I'm gonna try this one first. I'm gonna start off light. And this is the Kathleen Lights and Il Maquillage collaboration. I've got a review of this palette on my channel. So let's talk a little bit about Marilyn Monroe. Well, let's talk about a, little, a lot about the portrayal of Marilyn Monroe in this film. So overall, in this film, she was continually sexualized and infantilized. Um, she, I felt like there was no depth to her character, even though in real life she was incredibly intelligent. She was uh, a really shrewd businesswoman, but in this film, she was just condensed to a sex symbol and a woman with daddy issues. And you know, she there were loads of lines like, um, "Am I a good girl?" daddy uh, and she called all of her lovers daddy it's quite disturbing the film only touches on her intelligence a little bit only a little bit it suggested that she read different plays and novels uh, but I didn't really comment on much else and it also kind of suggested that she was a good actress who took her craft seriously and also had scenes of her writing some poems. Um, but that was kind of the um, extent of it. And there was just no mention of her starting her own production company, no mention of her like trying to fight for better pay for herself. Um, and apparently in an interview with the director, those things weren't interesting to him. So that's really feminist. Obviously, her she was known for having mental health issues and the film touched on that, but the film just portrayed her as mentally unstable all the way through with no respite. You know, she was continually unstable and um, unstable after miscarriage. And in the film, there are scenes where she gets in tranquilizer injected into her Whilst topless, like why? Why does she have to be topless? Why does she have to be naked? Please explain that to me. And it commented on how the Marilyn Monroe was created by the manager and the uh, Marilyn Monroe was a pers persona that Norma Jean Baker had to become to escape her demons, which could be viewed as either intelligent or mentally unstable and I feel like the film portrayed it as mentally unstable rather than sort of her compartment mentalizing her life trying to keep it manageable. I'm going to keep my eyelid like this I just basically sort of did a little cut crease sort of situation because uh, if you look at her in a film you will see that her the space between her lash line and her crease is light and only above that it's brown. Let's talk about, okay, so I'm gonna move on to eyeliner and whilst we do our eyeliner, we need to talk about the abortion and miscarriages she had. So, oh my God, she has, first of all, she has an abortion. Um, then she has a, a miscarriage and then she has another abortion. So the first abortion stemmed from the throuple relationship and it was portrayed as the men actually wanted to have the kid and Marilyn wanted to have the kid. But then she changed her mind after worrying that mental illness 
could be hereditary. I'm using the Inglot gel liner. But then on the way to have abortion, she changes her mind again to wanting to keep the baby. In the end, the abortion was not something that she wanted to have. And the way that the scenes were filmed was just horrific. It was really, really traumatic for the audience to watch, I feel like. We had this really weird point of view shot where the camera was either in her cervix, vagina, or her uterus, and then there was a slash, um, like showing her skin being cut. And it was just really, like, it's not, it wasn't graphic, but the way it was shot was just traumatic. So then she was married to Arthur Miller and they became pregnant. And this again was a wanted pregnancy. Um, but then she suffered a miscarriage because she was carrying some food on the beach and she just tripped, fell over, and she miscarried. It was as simple as that, just her falling over. And obviously she's distraught um, after that. Um, then she was pregnant again after by um, JFK. And then obviously she had to have abortion for that because, you know, how can the president have a child with his mistress out of wedlock? Um, and that again is something that she didn't want to do. So overall, just really horrible for Marilyn Monroe. This is basic. So that was kind of a matter of fact recap of the birthing stuff, birthing stuff in this film. But the way it was portrayed, so throughout this film, there was this baby, baby fetus, really, it's not a baby, it's a fetus. It wasn't really even a fetus probably at that point. Um, but it had this like 3D rendering of this fetus in the womb and it had this voice and it said, oh, are you going to, um, she had this voice in this like really high pitched childlike tone saying, You won't hurt me this time, will you? This was the second time that she was pregnant. Um, and in the kind of the first time she was, uh, when she had her abortion, you know, she said to herself, For this, you killed your baby. And this was referring to fame, which painted her as shallow. But so this film obviously had this really weird pro-life message, which I completely disagree with. I'm all pro-choice. You know, it's the woman's body. It's not about a pro-life, pro-choice debate. But the film definitely had this weird pro-life message um, with the 3D in, in rendering of the fetus, which it, it, the fetus would not look like the way it looked in the film at the stage of her pregnancy. It just wouldn't. And the weird baby voice as well. It's really disturbing. And especially with the abortion laws um, in America. Uh, and then having this film being pro-life, I think it's uh, it's just not well thought out. It's uh, I don't know what the producers were thinking about this. And another point that made this extra horrible was that in real life Marilyn Monroe suffered with endometriosis so she had miscarriages and she really struggled with fertility so for her to be portrayed in this way really just sm smudges her, leg her legacy so I'm just doing a little little line it's not really a wing per se and then like doing the eyeliner as close, as close as possible to my lash line. I'm going to apply some double eyelid tape now to kind of even out the creases of my eyelids um, because they don't match. And I want to give myself a little bit of more space between my crease and my lash line on my right eye. It's not an easy thing to do. Okay, so that's what worked. Um, now my eyes look a little bit more even. I mean, I can never get my eyes to match up. That's just 
that's just life. That's just genetics. It's the way it is. It's fine. Um, let's just clean up my eyeliner a little bit. So my lovely camera cut out again. So um, the last thing I talked about was the pro-life message. Um, let's talk about her romantic relationships. And just so you know, what I've done is applied some falsies to the outer half of my eye and uh, mascara to my lower lash line and just a little bit of a brown eyeshadow in my lower lash line. But what I did was to make sure there was a little bit of lightness between the upper and lower lash line because that's what she has in her makeup. What I'm gonna do now is highlight the brow bone. So her romantic relationships, she has this thruple relationship with Charlie Chaplin's son and then there's some other dude and it's portrayed as her like consensual relationship and there was this threesome sex scene in it as well where Anna Diamas was topless which I thought was unnecessary and they uh, they called themselves a Gemini and you had the feeling that she was happy in this relationship um, and she was like supposedly supported by these two guys. Um, but somehow you, even though she was happy, you, you as the audience still felt like she was being taken advantage of. And this proved to be true when they blackmailed Joe DiMaggio with nude pictures of her. And it's just sad because even though she thought she was in this loving relationship, um, the men still were taking advantage of her. So, you know, it just portrays her as this naive little girl, again, um, doesn't give her any credit whatsoever. I mean, at no point does this film give Marilyn Monroe any credit. And the next relationship she has is with Joe DiMaggio, who is controlling, abusive, and apparently this was true in real life. Um, so again, not a win for Marilyn Monroe. Then her next relationship was with Arthur Miller. And again, this was supposedly a happy relationship. Uh, but then uh, it was portrayed as it was her fault because she had a miscarriage and she went back to work. So the marriage broke down. Um, even though Arthur Miller called her Magda, who I think was like her, his, sorry, his first love or whatever. So again, M.M. just got condensed to this character not being appreciated for her own person. So she was just being taken advantage of in all of her relationships. And of course there was the JFK where there was this weird scene of fellatio and then there was the sexual abuse and then you, and she was um, urinating and you could see like she was in pain and it was just horrible. Um, so again, uh, Marilyn Monroe being portrayed as a victim. So there was just, it was just like, it was just relentless. There was no win for her at any part during the film. She was just being taken advantage of the entire time. And what I got really pissed off about was that all of the trauma she went through in the film, which is suggested is the stuff that she went through in her real life, which we know that at this point is not true, but everything was just distilled to a complete cliche of daddy issues. Like everything is just because she didn't have a dad. Um, everything she went through, all of the trauma, all of her failed relationships was because she had daddy issues. And in a relationship, um, in the film, she called all of her um, romantic partners daddy. Um, she was jealous of other people with dads. Like she really envied that and wanted that in the film. And there was like a string of letters from her father narrated throughout the film. And even when she passed away, she was happy and there was an image of her dad and she was happy that she was gonna be with her dad. And it's ridiculous. It's a complete cliche. This is, this is like a real person with a complex history. And in this film, it's all because she had daddy issues. Like, really? Are you, are you freaking kidding me? Okay, let's move on to the face and talk about the gratuitous nudity in this freaking film as well. So yeah, we get it. Marilyn Monroe was a sex symbol. Um, 
But why was there so much nudity in this film? So she was been exploited. So she was exploited back in the day, um, and now she's still being exploited just through another actress, in my opinion. So the narrative of her just being a bombshell with with no brain back in the sixties is just what she is in this film because there are just so many nude scenes that I thought was completely unnecessary. Like her being naked when she was towards the end of the film, when there were people coming to her house, and her being naked when Joe DiMaggio was hitting her after that blackmail scene, and the recreation of those nude photographs as well of Marilyn Marone. I just didn't really understand why that was necessary other than continuing exploiting her bombshell image and Anna the Aramas how, how you pronounce her name she's great I mean she's obviously a very attractive woman um I think you know she she did a good job acting in the film other than her accent sort of being a little bit dodgy here and there but overall you know she she did a really good job and I always feel like she I don't know I just I just felt like the nudity was not necessary and even for the actress who played her mum I'm doing quite a bit of contouring by the way because she has quite a contoured nose and also there's quite a bit of contouring here in the photos that I can see so I'm just putting a little bit of a cool toned contour there this is the Kevin McQuan sculpting powder in medium and even her mum when her mum like set the house on fire or something um there was a just bit where her mum closed the door and she was full frontal nudity like why like how why was that necessary what how, how did that add to the plot line or the character um and like when her mum was drowning her in the bathtub um her mum was half naked as well and again I just I just really don't see the need for it other than it being for the male gaze and even though I know that the nudity wasn't sexualized I just didn't see the point in it and I know there was a scene where like Joe DiMaggio kind of um abused her and she was half naked in that I get that was meant to show vulnerability, but I think she could have still shown vulnerability with a bra on. I just really don't think it added anything. And with good acting and editing in post-production, you know, with music, whatever, you're still able to portray the vulnerability. You don't need the actress to be half naked for God's sake. I'm doing a bit of contouring here too, like, because she definitely has shading here and shading up here to get this kind of like button nose look. So that's what I'm doing. I never contour my nose. So this is uh, a new adventure for me. Does this look okay? <laughs> I don't know. Does it just make my nose look muddy? So I just felt like all of the scenes that where she was half naked, um, which I think was meant to show vulnerability, but again, it paints her as a victim, it infantilizes her, and she could have had all of those scenes with a bra on, with a nighty on, and I feel like it would have worked just the same. And let's talk about the cinematography uh, of this film, because I get it, this was meant to be sort of artistic film, and you can tell from the way it was shot um, and some of the techniques that was used in, in the film. So for example, there was the scene where uh, Joni Maggio storms back home, really angry after seeing the um, nude photos of Marilyn Marone. And the way it was shot was like her, his head, sorry, I keep saying her, his head um, was basically fixed to the screen and the background was moving. So it really kind of showed um, him to be this madman on the loose. And I appreciate that. I think, you know, that's 
good direction and editing. Um, and there was the bit where uh, she climaxed during her threesome and she was like holding onto the bed sheets at the end of the bed and the bed sheets tend to um, Niagara Falls which was like um one one of the one of the films uh that she was in called Niagara and I thought that was a cool transition quite artistic quite poetic but the overall message of the film um, really just made me hate the film. So I don't really care if the film was artistic or whatever. It, the way the character was portrayed, the way Marilyn Monroe was portrayed is was a complete disservice that honestly, I don't really care. So the, the bad points basically negates the good points in the film because the bad points are just so bad. <sighs> Looking at the pictures, her con like her bronzer and blush is really low, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm using the Marc Jacobs bronzer in Tantastic. I know I like I really like Marc Jacobs products. I got it when basically they were going out of business and had a huge sale. Um, and R.I.P. Marc Jacobs Beauty because actually your products are pretty great. So there's just a little bit of bronzer on the forehead. So if I feel like over applying, I'm just, you know, using my foundation brush to correct it. And then it's really low down on the cheek, like here. Usually I will apply about here, but they've got it down here. not flattering on my face shape and it's not aggressive so I'm just going with quite this which is why I chose a shade because it's pretty light on my skin tone and it's not too pigmented so that's what we're doing with bronzer and she does have a bit of highlight but it's very subtle out, so I'm using the Hourglass Holiday Palette. I'm using the highlighter shade from this one because it is quite a subtle shade. And I'm actually going to add a little bit of this one on top to really make sure it's not blingy or, or overpowering. I think she has more of a golden undertone but this highlighter is perhaps just a little bit more too pink okay I'm going to do a lot of concealer around my lips because the lip shape is very specific and I need to change my lip shape all right the jumper is coming off I know my lips look really scary right now so eyeliner Lisa Aldridge ribbon so there is hardly a cupid's bow uh, which is why I really put a lot of concealer on and Basically, I think the way that her makeup was done was that um, the middle part was the real part, like her real lip line. And then they exaggerated the outside um, and her lips look quite thin. But obviously my lips aren't. So I'm going to have to underline my lips rather than overline my lips in the middle. I'll show you what I mean. And it's definitely got a wide shape to it. So I'm overlining on the side which is honestly something I never do. So my phone stopped recording again. God, just like kill me now. Um, but I was talking about my lip shape and how just this part of my lip is just so prominent and it's really difficult to sort of hide it because even if you put loads of concealer on, the natural light and shadows are still bouncing off of your face. So um, yeah, it's really difficult to correct, but I feel like this is as best as I can get. It's really throwing me off when I look at myself in the mirror. This is not how my lips look like. Um, but yeah, this is the finished look, uh, Marilyn Monroe look. And I just want to talk a little bit about my overall thoughts on the film. Um, first of all, don't watch it. Don't waste three hours of your life watching this film. It's really, really unpleasant. Uh, it's difficult to watch at points. Some of the scenes are not graphic, but they just make you feel some other way. And it's, it's just not pleasant, so don't recommend it. Second of all, the film came across as really sadistic because it was traumatic episode after traumatic episode after traumatic episode 
without any respite. It was relentless and it's really just, yeah, as to, which is why it was difficult to watch. And the third point is that Marilyn Monroe is just a victim in this film. Um, she gets diminished to a sex symbol who's a child with daddy issues. It's completely unfair to, you know, the the real version, the real human being behind this fictional, half fictional, half non-fictional story. It's just, it's not right. And final point is, I <laughs> my understanding is that this film has been marketed as a feminist film, but I did not come out of it feeling empowered. Uh, it just made me feel sad. And so, yeah, even though it's been marketed as a feminist film, it, it's not because it, it, it does not empower women in any shape or form. Yeah, and anyway, that, that's it, really. I hope you enjoyed this video. I wanted to do something a little bit different because I didn't just want to talk about makeup. I wanted to talk about something else. And I feel like... I mean, I'm still not really sure what, what I want to talk about, but I do have a second channel where I talk about more serious things like life, career. Um, I've only got one video on it so far, but more content is coming, I promise, for that channel. Uh, so please go subscribe. <laughs> and for this channel, I guess, I still just want to talk about something that's not as serious as the other one, but still quite lighthearted but obviously still talking about makeup, but just a little bit more than makeup. Um, so I wanted to add a little commentary to this um, because at the end of the day, makeup is just skin deep. It's just something you put on and wash off, which is why it's so fun. But you know, that's it really. Um, so yeah, I hope you enjoy this and um, yeah, God, but that's it. Okay, <laughs> all right, <laughs> bye. Oh yeah, comment and subscribe and like and all of that. Yeah, okay, bye. Just realized that I really need to shave my mustache. <laughs> um.